Hey guys, today I wanted to share some products that I would like to either finish this year or hit pan on this year. And this is not a project pan. This year I decided I really just want to allow myself to use whatever I want and not really feel tied down to using the same products over and over again and filming project pan updates and all of that because I just feel like that was starting to add some unnecessary stress to the makeup process and really makeup should just be fun and enjoyable. So I'm not doing a project pan this year, but I definitely still want to use up products. I'm just hoping to be able to do that naturally rather than, you know, really deliberately trying to make my way through products. And so I was thinking it would probably be a good idea to at least have a casual list of products that I'm keeping in mind to hopefully finish this year. Some of these I'm feeling pretty confident that I can finish up pretty easily. And then some of these are kind of more in like a maybe category, but I at least just want to keep them in mind and try to use them as much as possible this year. And if I use them up, that's great, but I'm not going to be filming updates on these products. I just kind of wanted to lay the foundation for hopefully some good makeup empties this year. So let me go ahead and start with honestly the product that kind of inspired this whole video. This is the Ilia Super Serum Skin Tint. I don't know why I didn't realize this, but this actually has an expiration date on the bottom. It's like imprinted into the plastic, so it's actually kind of hard to notice. And it says it expires February 2024, which is the month that we are currently in. I'm going to take that to mean the end of February. And so I really want to try to finish this this month. This is going to be my go-to base product for the month. I'm going to try to wear it as many days as I can. I am wearing it today. I love this product. It, it makes sense that it's supposed to expire this month because I did buy this in 2022. So, you know, it's definitely getting to that point. Um, and also it does have sunscreen in it. So I'm assuming the expiration date is really referring to the sunscreen. If I don't finish it by the end of February, as long as it's still performing fine and doesn't smell weird, I'm going to keep using it until it's done, but hopefully it'll be done at least not too long after that expiration date. So I'm already getting to work on this. There is one other foundation. This is my next oldest foundation. This is the LYS Triple Fix Serum Foundation. Actually, I might've bought these at the exact same time if I'm remembering correctly. I think I bought these in the same Sephora order. So this is just as old as the Ilia foundation. This doesn't have an expiration date on it. It does say nine month period after opening, but I, I don't pay attention to those <laughs> most of the time. But this, I actually am, I, I think I'm about halfway done with it. I've had it standing upright. It's still kind of hard to see, but it's definitely like around this point. So I'm about halfway done with this one. Uh, I forgot to say, I don't know how much I have left of the Ilia one because this bottle is obviously very opaque, but I think it's about halfway if I had to guess. It definitely looks like it goes pretty, pretty far down. So I'm going to guess a third to a half of this is left. And with the LYS foundation, there's about half left. So I definitely think it would be realistic to have both of these finished this year. I do use up about two foundations a year on average. So I don't think it would be entirely unrealistic to expect to finish these this year. So those are the two base products. I also have a primer that I do think wouldn't be too hard to finish. This is the e.l.f. Poreless Putty Primer, but it's just a mini size. And I definitely already have a dip going in here. I mean, I feel like it would be pretty hard not to because it's so small at this point. I've also had this since 2022, so it's not the oldest product, but still, you know, it's going on two years old now. So it would be nice to just finish this up this year, especially because it is just a mini. This isn't my favorite primer in the world, but I do like it. It definitely does help to smooth out any pores and texture and give you just like a nice smooth canvas for makeup. And even though it's not my preferred primer, I can definitely still see the utility of it. And so I, yeah, I really would just like to finish this up. And I don't know how long it would take to finish this. Probably, I would guess it would probably take me like two months of using it every time I wear makeup to finish it. So if I could use it up in two dedicated months of panning, I could probably definitely finish it in the next 11 months, you know? So I don't think this one should be too hard as long as I, you know, actually use it. This one I'm definitely not feeling as confident about using up, mainly because I just have no idea how much is left in here, but this is my oldest concealer. And so it is the next one that I would like to see finished. Um, this is the LA Girl Pro Conceal high definition concealer. I have the shade buff. And the funny, the funny thing about this, it is a squeeze tube, but my squeeze tube has not gotten smaller. Like since I've started using it, I think there's just a lot of air in here and I can't necessarily squeeze it out 
because if I did, I would also probably squeeze out a ton of product with it. So um, I think it's probably going to be one of those situations where one day all the air is going to come out and then at that point I'm guessing there probably won't be that much left because I've definitely used this a lot. I think I've had it for almost two full years now so it's not that old which is why I'm not in a huge hurry to finish it. But if I do use up any concealer this year, I do hope that it will be this one. Something that I worked on for quite a while in 2023 that I would like to go ahead and finish this year is the Oma Beauty Contour Stick. This is in the shade White Pearl. It's the lightest shade. And I I bought this in 2020, so it's, it's definitely getting old. It's one of the oldest things in my collection right now. Definitely needs to be on its way out. This is how much I have left of the contour, which is really not a lot. Like, I, I don't think I should have any trouble finishing that this year. As far as the highlighter goes, I don't... I mean, this is how much I have left of the highlighter, which actually isn't that much when you think about it. Like, as far as stick products go, I, d I think I could use this up in a year. This is also a very soft, creamy formula, so it does go down more quickly than, like, a really stiff stick would. So, I, I don't know. I'm... It would be awesome if I could finish both sides of this this year. I would just be over the moon if I could do that. But if nothing else, I really do want to finish the contour side at least. And then maybe at that point I could de depot the cream highlight and maybe put it in a different container. But that would be a great two-in-one. It would be awesome to finish that this year. I have a couple more bronzers, actually three more bronzers, that I just want to hit pan on this year. So I don't necessarily care if I finish them, but would love to hit pan because I think I'm pretty close on all three. The first one I did work on in 2023 for a little while. This is the Soul Body Bronzing Balm in Fair, by far my largest bronzer. So this one definitely takes some dedication to hit pan on, but I do have a pretty big dip going in here already. So I, I don't think the pan could be too far off. I think if I were to just focus on this for another couple of months in the spring and summer of this year, I, I think I could definitely hit pan. Finishing it would be another story. That might have to happen next year, <laughs> 2025. But um, for now, I would just like to hit pan on this because this, again, is getting old. And this was actually something that a friend decluttered to me. So I don't even know exactly how old it is, but I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna worry about it. It still smells great. It still smells like the beach. I love the scent of this. This is definitely something I reach for the most in the spring and summer because it is so warm. haven't reached for it a whole lot recently, but I will definitely be getting back into this probably starting in March next month. Yay! Spring is right around the corner, you guys. I'm so excited. Another cream bronzer I would love to hit pan on this year is the e.l.f. Putty Bronzer in the shade Feelin' Shady. I actually think I'm probably just days away from hitting pan on this, and it's in my everyday makeup drawer right now, so hopefully this will have a pan in it pretty soon. I'm wearing it today. Yeah, this is actually a pretty small container. Let's see, this comes with 10 grams. Actually, this isn't as small as I thought. It comes with um, 10 grams or 0.35 ounces, which is actually more than a lot of cream cheek products come with. Most of them, I think, are around like 0.25 ounces, 8 to 10 grams. So it's, it's about average, but not as small as I thought. I think it's just, it's a deceivingly small looking container, but it actually does come with a fair amount of product, but it's also pretty sheer, so I use a, a fair amount of it when I do use it. But this has a huge dip in it, so this is something I, I feel really confidently that I can finish, or not finish, but at least hit pan this year and then really just make, hopefully just make as much progress as I can on it. It would be nice to use it up this year too, but for now, I'm just going to try to hit pan. Okay, and then the last bronzer. I guess I have a lot of bronzers that I want to focus on this year. This is the only powder bronzer that I have to show today. This is the Fenty Sun Stalker bronzer in the shade Into Sun, my favorite powder bronzer. I don't know how close I am to hitting pan on this, truthfully. I do know that I have completely worn away the Fenty Beauty imprint that was on here. And I'm starting to be able to see the ring kind of not peeking out, but there's like a raised ring you can see in the middle of the pan, which usually tells me I'm getting close to hitting pan. So I don't think I'm as close on this as I am with the e.l.f. putty bronzer, but I definitely think it'll happen soon. If not this month, then I'm going to guess like early spring there will be pan in this bronzer. If all goes according to plan, I will have at least three new bronzer pans at the end of the year, and I'll also hopefully have one finished. So feeling kind of ambitious with the bronzers this year, but I, and I don't even have that many bronzers, but these two especially are getting really old. So I would say the Oma and the Soul Body would be my two priorities because these are definitely the oldest. The Elf and the Fenty aren't actually that old, 
I think I've had the Elf since 2022 and the Fenty I'd only just bought last year. Haven't even had it a full year yet. So these two would just be more of a fun bonus since I am already pretty close to hitting pan. I didn't use up very many cheek products in 2023. So I'm thinking I have a lot that I'm like either close to hitting pan on or well, not close to using up except for the Oma, but I really do hope to have more cheek empties this year than I did in 2023. I do have two more blushes that I want to hit pan on this year. Again, I probably won't finish either one. Blushes are so hard to finish. This first one, I was trying to hit pan on this last year. This is the Milani Cheek Kiss Cream Blush in Nude Kiss, and I do already have quite a dip going in here. I really don't think the pan could be too far off. This, I actually just realized, comes with even less product than the e.l.f. Putty Bronzer. Um, this one only comes with 6 grams, the e.l.f. one comes with 10. So this actually isn't a huge compact, and the dip I have is actually pretty wide, like it kind of goes all the way across the pan, so I feel like this is one of those things that once I hit pan on it, it probably won't take that much longer to finish. I mean, I'm saying that now, but at the same time, I would be surprised if I finished this in 2024, that would be great, but my goal is to just hit pan on it this year. Just as much as I want to finish things this year, I also just want to see more pans in my collection because I have a lot of products, not a whole lot of pans at this moment. So especially in my cheek collection, I would love to see some more pans in there. Here's another one that isn't quite as much of a priority, but I was realizing this one actually doesn't come with very much product at all. This is the Tower 28 Beach Please Cream Blush in Magic Hour. I was realizing this only comes with 4.5 grams. So less than half of what even the e.l.f. putty bronzer comes with. They really don't give you much product in here. For me, that's fine. In fact, I would almost prefer that because it takes me so long to use anything up as it is. But if you were buying this as like your sole blush to use, you would probably use it up pretty quickly. Like I would, you would probably use it up in a year if this was your only blush. I have also heard because Tower 28 is a so-called clean beauty brand, their products can expire more quickly than others. I have had this a little bit less than two years now, and it's it still performs great, has no smell, but I don't know how much longer that will be the case. So I would love to at least hit pan on this this year. This one definitely I think would actually probably be pretty quick to make progress on because it's also a pretty soft formula as well, but I definitely don't have as much of a dip in here as I do in all these other cheek products. So it would probably take a while. So really the only reason I'm including this in here is because I didn't realize it is so small, so I don't think it would be too hard to at least hit pan on this year. So I'm gonna make that my goal. I love this blush shade. In fact, I love it more now than I ever did before. And I've had this for a while, but I've only just realized that this is like my perfect blush color. I love it in, especially in the warmer months, but yeah, I'm thinking probably once spring rolls around, I'm definitely going to be putting this in my everyday makeup drawer. And my everyday makeup drawer is really going to be where I focus on these products. So throughout the year, I'm definitely going to make an effort to include these in multiple of my monthly everyday makeup drawer videos so that I can make progress. And once when something is in my drawer, usually I use it quite a bit throughout the course of a month. So I think that's going to be the best strategy for making sure I'm making progress on these items. Another thing I made a lot of progress on last year, but I didn't hit pan. And so I want to try to hit pan this year. This is the Aether Beauty Crushed Diamond Highlighter in Pink Diamond Dust. This has a huge dip. I was working on this for the majority of 2023. Still no pan to be found. I, I mean... I feel like the pan has to be like right there, you know, like I feel like it's got to be so close. But then again, it's a highlighter. I use a very soft diffuse, diffuse brush. I use a very fluffy brush when I use this highlighter. I don't pick up a lot each time I use it. And so it just goes at a snail's pace. But it would make me so happy to see a pan in this highlighter at some point this year. Another repeat from Project Pans Past is my Anastasia Norvina palette. This was my first and only attempt at a pan that palette in 2022. My goal was to hit pan on every shade that year. I did not hit pan on every shade, but I did hit pan on 10 out of 14 shades, so not too shabby for me. This palette is getting old. I think, I think it's my oldest palette now. I bought this in 2018 when it launched, so it is very old. I do think I think I'm just going to go ahead and, and say now, I'm probably going to retire this at the end of 2024 if I don't do it sooner than that. 
because it's just it's just getting really old. It's getting to the point where, you know, probably after this year, I wouldn't want to put it on my eyes. This is definitely going to be something that I keep in my makeup keepsake bin of products that I've decluttered that are too old to use now, but they hold some kind of sentimental value. This would have to be one of those things. I think of all the palettes I've owned, this is probably the one I've used the most. I definitely have hit pan on the most shades in here, and it's just a really beautiful palette. I'm wearing this today on my eyes actually, and I did film this look, so assuming that footage came out well, there will be a YouTube short tutorial of this makeup look, but today I used a lot of like the pinks and purples. I used the shade Love in my crease, the pink matte, and then I deepened up my upper lash line and lower lash line with Soul, this really fun dusty periwinkle shade, one of the few shades I don't have pan. <laughs> on. Then the shimmers, I just have the purple and the pink, Celestial and Wild Child. Celestial I have in the outer half of my lid, and then Wild Child I applied to the inner half of my lid and just sort of blended them together in the middle. And that is how I got this very ethereal look. I'm also wearing like a navy blue pencil liner and winged it out. I just, I love all the pinks and purples in here, especially for Valentine's Day makeup looks. Anyway, back to the topic of this video, which is products I want to hit pan on. So I misspoke earlier. I've hit pan on nine out of the 14 shades in here, so there are five that still have no pan. I think the only shade left that I care to hit pan on is the shade Incense. This matte warm brown shade over here, I'm surprised I don't already have pan in that shade because that is one of the most neutral <laughs> staple shades in the whole palette, but it really wasn't until the last like year or so that I really got into warm brown eyeshadow, so maybe that's why. But if I can hit pan on incense, then I think I'll be happily ready to retire this palette. I might keep it a little longer than that just to have it till the end of the year, but that's the only shade I really care to hit pan on now. I do have small dips in Drama, Passion, and Soul, and I really have no dip in the shade Eccentric, this other warm brown. Of course, I'd love to hit pan on more than just incense, but as long as I can hit pan on that one this year, I think I'll be satisfied. Yeah, I'm gonna miss this palette, especially because it is no longer sold. They discontinued it, so I really want to make a point to enjoy it as much as I can this year. As far as other eyeshadows, I have two cream shadows I would like to focus on this year as well. This one I worked on last year also. This is the Charlotte Tilbury Eyes to Mesmerize Cream Shadow in Rose Gold. I would love to finish this eventually, but for 2024, I would just like to hit pan on this. I already do have a pretty big dip going in here. I think I'm, I still have quite a ways to go before I hit pan. So this is another thing that I would really just like to make sure I'm not neglecting this year. Like I'm gonna have to regularly rotate it into my everyday makeup drawers. Maybe you guys can hold me to that if you notice that I forget for like months at a time. Maybe give me a little nudge to put this in my everyday makeup drawer. I'm gonna have to really make sure to use it a lot. Honestly, on days like today, I really should have used this as an eyeshadow base today because I think like this would be a great look for that. Anytime I'm doing a rosy look, I should try to use this as my base because that's really the main way that I am going to get use out of it. And then of course also it does make a great one and done eyeshadow for just like a warm peachy rose gold color. If I'm ever just doing a really quick look and heading out the door, I can just quickly slap this on. You can blend it out with a finger. That's the nice thing about cream shadows is they're so easy to just slap on even when you're not wearing much other makeup. So I'm gonna, yeah, I'm really gonna have to try and keep this front of mind this year. My other cream eyeshadow actually also happens to be rose gold. This is the e.l.f. No Budge eyeshadow stick in rose gold. Of all of my eyeshadow sticks, this one is running the lowest. Now, this actually is something that my aunt gave to me, so she had already used a good bit of this. So I, I owe all of the credit to her on what has already been used up. I mean, I have used it a fair amount of times myself. I think she sent this to me towards the end of 2022. I'm not sure how old it was prior to that, but because I know it is definitely getting older, I uh, would just like to go ahead and finish it up, especially because there's not that much left. And this is also such an easy thing to throw on as an eyeshadow base. It's just not a step that I always remember to take, but this year I'm really going to have to maybe just alternate which of these is in my everyday makeup drawer at any given time, because I think these are the only two rose gold cream shadows that I own. I can just swap one out for the other every every now and then, or maybe even once a month, I can just switch them out and just have one of these in my everyday makeup drawer at all times. I have three eyeliners. I would be happy to finish any of these this year. If I could finish all three, that would be amazing. 
These are all from CoverGirl, actually. All of my CoverGirl eyeliners I got in 2021. I think there was, like, one, like, month period where I just bought and I think was also sent a bunch of CoverGirl eyeliners all, all around the same time. So I just have slowly been making my way through them. These are the only three I have left. The good news is I've already used up different shades of both of these formulas. So first up we have, this is also a repeat from my project pan last year, the CoverGirl Exhibitionist Coal Eyeliner Pencil in Black. As you can see, I've already made a lot of progress on this pencil. I would say I've probably used half of it up by now, maybe a little less than half, but it's definitely getting shorter. I think I could easily use this up this year. I think I really just want to make a point to use my eyeliners more this year across the board. Not just these, but all of my eyeliners. I want to try to remember to tight line whenever I, you know, feel like that works for whatever look I'm doing. And I also have some really pretty light shimmery colors that I can wear in the lower waterline. For example, today would be a great day to wear my NYX Epic Wear Liner Stick in Periwinkle Pop in my lower waterline. Basically anytime an eyeliner makes sense as part of whatever look I'm doing, I want to make sure to wear at least one of my eyeliners. Obviously there are also some days where I don't want to wear an eyeliner or I just don't feel like an eyeliner suits whatever look I'm doing, so I'm not going to do it on those days, but any day that it does make sense to wear eyeliner, I'm just gonna wear it. But these would be my top three focus ones. So the CoverGirl Coal Eyeliner, this one is great for tight lining. It's great for like a smudgy, smoky wing. And then I have two shades here of the CoverGirl Perfect Point Plus eyeliners. I have Midnight Blue and Gray Khaki. So these are nice because even though they're not just your standard black or brown, they are still kind of neutral or wearable colors that you can wear with a lot of really like basic looks. So um, Midnight Blue I actually have on today. I feel like navy blue goes so nicely with pink and purple. As, a, as an eyeliner, it's something a little bit different, a little bit softer than black. Yeah, I've actually really been enjoying this navy blue eyeliner a lot more lately. And then gray khaki is really nice as well. It's this soft olive taupe shade. And I do like this one, especially if I'm doing an olivey or green look, something with a lot of earthy tones. This one is great for that. So just want to make a point to use these as much as I can. These two, um, the Perfect Point Plus eyeliners, I have no way of knowing how much is left in these because it's the kind of pencil you can't twist back down. So it's all a mystery. I will just be surprised when they run out. Um, but I have already used up the brown one of these. So, you know, I know it, at least it can be done. <laughs> I do know that. But these are my three oldest liners and I would love to use them all up this year. And of course, in this video, I'm not including things that I'm obviously going to use up this year, like mascaras, even things like face powders or like my Sigma color corrector, which I'm almost done with. I'm not including those in this video because those are things that I'm, I'm just gonna use up anyway, but there are some things that I do think it's at least gonna take some attention to get them finished. Another one I made some good progress on last year is the BK Beauty Everlast lip liner in the shade Warm Spice. I still have a lot of this left, but really, in lip liner terms, it's not that much. Like, I think with some dedicated time with this pencil, if I were to use this every day for a month, I think I would probably be able to finish it in a month or two. I'm not going to do that, though, but I think spread out over the course of a year, I, I really, I should be able to finish this. In 2023, I used up three lip liners, which was my most ever, actually. I did multitask a lot of those as blush, though, so that definitely helped. And if I, if I do that a few times with this, I think I should probably be able to knock it out even sooner. This is just my oldest lip pencil, so it is the next one that I would like to see finished. And this is also a, not, I wouldn't say it's like, soft and creamy, but it's also not really stiff either. It's just somewhere in the middle, but I think it does move fairly quickly. This year, if I don't use up any other lip products, I really want to finish at least the Tower 28 lip gloss in Pistachio. I've had this sitting upright for the last couple of hours so I could try to get a, a good idea of where I am with this. I know I'm a little bit lower than this third black line here. This was in my project pan for just a couple months last year, so I did make some progress on it then, and I've used a little bit more since then. And this is a pretty fast moving gloss. It really doesn't come with a ton of product. It comes with less than your average lip gloss. So I do feel like this is something I can easily use up. Um, I like to use it a lot, even just as I'm getting ready to sort of prep my lips, give them a little moisture, and then maybe I'll wipe it off and put on a lipstick or something or a different lip product. I think in addition to being a makeup product, it also doubles as a lip treatment because it is very hydrating and nourishing on my lips. 
just feels really nice. It's one of those lip products that feels so nice on your lips. So I think I will enjoy using up the rest of this, but I do really want to finish this because I've had a lot of people tell me these glosses expire quickly and I've had mine for a while now. So actually just as long as I've had the blush, because I think I bought them in a set actually. I think I bought these two Tower 28 products in a little set. Is that right? I don't know. Um, I know I bought them at the same time, so they're the same age and the gloss definitely needs to be finished soon. <laughs> and the gloss I really want to finish sooner rather than later. And last but not least, we have, this is actually my oldest gloss. I'm not as worried about it expiring as I am the Tower 28 one, but I do think I would like to finish this this year as well. This is the e.l.f. Lip Plumping Gloss in Champagne Glam. This is a sheer gloss with a really beautiful warm golden champagne shimmer to it. So it looks beautiful as a topper, especially to nude lipsticks, but also on its own, it just gives so much shine to the lips. And I just really love this gloss. It's a great formula. I actually used up the shade Pink Cosmo a few years ago, and I remember that one going pretty quickly as well with just dedicated use. I don't know how much this comes with, but I think this also is a pretty small amount. I think it's probably about the same as the Tower 28, if I'm not mistaken. So once I finish up the Tower 28 one, I'll move on to focusing on the e.l.f. But yeah, it would be great to finish both of these this year. So that is everything in my collection that I'm hoping to use up or hit pan on in 2024. I definitely don't think I will be able to do that with every single one of these products, but I do think the majority of these are pretty realistic. So definitely look forward to seeing these products in my everyday makeup drawer throughout the year. Um, I'm really excited to see how many of these things I do finish and just really curious in general to see how my makeup empties are different this year than they were in previous years when I was really actively panning. Let me know down below if you are doing a project pan this year and if not, if you have sort of like a casual running list of makeup that you would like to just head towards using up in the near future. I would love to hear down below what those products are. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I do also have a Patreon and a channel membership if you're interested in supporting my channel further and getting some extra videos. Otherwise, I hope you all have an amazing rest of your day and I will talk to you again very soon in my next video. Bye!